What's up YouTube? Welcome back. Ammo test series number two for 12 gauge. Today we're going to be using the Mossberg 590 retrograde, a favorite on the channel. We're going to be using that to launch some Winchester, what was known as PDX-1 Defender, but now they just call it Defender. This is the version with the slug and three balls. So we have three double-lot buckshot pellets and that's in front of a one ounce slug. The picture on the back shows them stacked with the three double-aught bucks sitting there on top of the slug. And there is a buffering compound in there to hold things together. The advertised velocity is 1150 feet per second. We will definitely check that out on the chronograph today. And almost every time I've ever used these slugs or tried to pattern them, they do actually pattern correct. It's like a triangle of the three pellets with a slug directly in the middle. They do work best out of open chokes, also known as cylinder bore chokes. This Mossberg 590 is a defensive style shotgun. It has no choke in there at all. It's not even threaded for one, so it cannot accept one. And this is definitely defensive style ammunition. It's called Defender. So that's why we've chosen this shotgun to match up with this ammo. With something like this Holosun 407 CX2 mounted on top of your home defense shotgun, you can get very accurate. Let's chronograph and pattern this at a few different distances and then throw it into the gel and see what happens over there. And this particular version of the 590 Retrograde has a 20 inch barrel. There are other variants. And some may say, why is there a bayonet on this shotgun? Well, I didn't put it there. It was born with it. It's just that cool. You'll notice these shells have a darker finish on them. They are two and three quarter. They do say Defender on the side of them. Every now and then they look a little bit different. They have a nice water sealed or watertight burnt in crimp. And on the back they say Winchester 12 gauge. All right, let's start with what might be a reasonable home defense distance. We are 15 feet off that target, 10 feet off that chronograph. We're gonna send one down range. I'm assuming this pattern is gonna be pretty darn tight, but we might see some dispersion. That's impressive, let's go take a look. We had 1103. The box advertised 1150, so that's good. That means it didn't take some kind of 36 inch barrel or something goofy like that to get the velocity we needed. So I don't think you can get better than that with accuracy. The slug is dead center. The triangle itself is very symmetrical. It's just shifted off center a little bit. That's not bad. Remember the slug pushes behind those three pellets. The buffering does hold it together nice, but it's, it's understandable that sometimes it shifts a little bit. The slug is the important part. The wad hit all the way up here, and that's about it for that. That's really nice patterning, even at 10 feet or 15 feet distance. Let's move it back a little bit. All right, we're now 25 feet off that target. Let's see if we get more dispersion, and let's see if we shift our point of aim, point of impact. It went a little bit higher. That could have been me. It could have been the shotgun or the red dot adjustment but still not bad. Let's go look at where the triangle is. All right, again, very acceptable. If you'll notice, this whole pattern is pretty darn symmetrical. I used a little bit of mud to mark the previous ones. We know that was the center. This time, here's the center. Hole, hole, and hole. That's a nice triangle. That's very uniform. I think these two could have spread out just a little bit more, but that's very nice. I'm pretty sure that's probably where I ended up pulling the trigger, or like I said, you have to take into account a zero on these things, and I have it zeroed for gel blocks. I don't have it zeroed for any other thing except for home defense distances, which this is good enough for, and hitting gel blocks at this very moment. It's not set up for 50 yard shots or anything like this, so at short distance zeros, you do get a quick shift. Let's move back again. All right, 35 feet off that target now. I would say we're starting to approach some of the longer hallways you're gonna encounter, and we're not talking about outside of the house, so like I said, inside house, but in general, you know that this stuff is gonna widen out, so you wouldn't use this for much other than defense. Let's keep that in mind. But at 35 feet, let's see where she patterns. All right, I was definitely confident that my red dot was on the bullseye at that trigger pull. Let's go take a look. All right, this one's a little interesting. Like I said, I was aiming right here, you can see that at least my left and right was good. It did raise according to the distance that we walked off pretty much. But you notice the pattern here, one, two, three. So the central impact raised up a little bit. And again, the pattern's very nice for the pellets. They just shifted off the central impact or the central impact shifted off the pellets. Hard to say, but I think I would believe the slug being the heavy one that's doing most of the work. I would assume that's the most accurate part of this. I could totally be wrong. But even at 35 feet, that's still a very nice pattern. That's pretty darn good for that, you know, home defense type of stuff, application at that distance. That is pretty darn nice. That's what it's designed to do. Again, that's out of an open choke or a cylinder bore choke. 
there are tests out there showing that this ammunition will definitely behave differently in constricting or more constricted chokes all the way up to full chokes it can start to get a little unpredictable actually with a full choke all right let's see how this goes take your bets right now are the pellets or the slugs going to make it deeper and are the pellets going to come out of the block we're about 15 feet off that target and chronograph let's let one rip Ten seventy eight. Let's take a look. All right, 1078 on the Winchester Defender. And I forgot about this stuff. I forgot this happens. That Grex compound, that buffer that they use, this little plasticky, polymery stuff, whatever, looks like salt. It's all over this block, and that makes it a mess, but it's kind of cool looking, I guess. Nice entrance wound, by the way. We did have a nice triangle with a slug in the middle. Definitely a good hole. And just so you know what we got going on here, I didn't mention it earlier, but we are using 40 inches of clear ballistics gel block, but we're using a shotgun block here in the front. When the blocks get torn up enough, we use them for shotgun stuff. The catcher block back here is just a used block. Don't pay any attention to those things in there, but let's take a look at this wound track. So from the side, you can see a very big disruption from that slug. Let's follow the slug first. That's right there. That's going to go down and it's going to travel all the way through that first block with, like I said, a pretty good wound track all the way up to about the 15 and a half inch mark. Then it settles down a hair, picks back up a little disruption there between 18 and 19 inches, and then finally lands what I think is kind of nose down. We'll have to get it out to see for sure. But right at about 24 and three quarter, maybe 25 inches is where it landed. It has a bounce back. I'll try to get the camera lined up for it. The bounce back is from about 26 and three quarter inches. We see a lot of bullets bounce back. This is no different. So the slug is resting there. However, it's little triangle counterparts, the three pellets. One has landed right there. If I can get the focus to grab it, the focus stinks today. So right here is one of those pellets and that's right at 17 inches. Here's another one of those pellets with some bounce back and that's at about 18 and a quarter inches. There's another one in there somewhere and it is all the way back there so that's almost trying to come out of the other side of the block and that's right in line with the other two for the most part so those double lot buckshot pellets they do leave just pretty much a piercing what you would expect bb type of a wound track a tiny bit of disruption in there as they go through now some of these are going to be copper plated depending on what run you've got this ammo from a long time ago they were copper plated i've noticed recently they're just lead like i said it's not the best block sorry about that but shotguns are very hard on blocks you can definitely see where that slug ripped through the middle. You can see where it's at least two of those petals or pellets went off to the sides. Like I said, that's very nice dispersion. It didn't go too far outside of that block at all. The slug went on to go very deep. I personally think that in gel, this thing did exactly what it said it would do for the most part. People ask, why do we need a bayonet? What a silly question. Okay, it's not ballistic block rated. All right, there's the three pellets and there's the slug. You can notice that there's dents in the front of that slug where it definitely had the weight behind it. It pushed these slugs and those things dented it. There I go, losing them. But you see the triangle dent from this thing just slamming, trying to push them out of the barrel. It does have a concavity in the back of the barrel and it's not that big of a projectile in general. You see the rifling where it went ahead and engaged and smoothed itself out. Not a whole lot of damage in general. You can actually see in here, if you look close enough, where that Grex compound, that buffer, you can see where that left some impressions too. The hollow point in the center of it didn't exactly do anything for it. It didn't open up. But hey, maybe we can change that. We can reload this into something cool. Well, there we go. Very simple test, but I think we got good information. We saw some velocity. We saw foot pounds. We saw good patterning. Good patterning out to a decent distance. We saw good performance on the gel, and it stayed within the gel. I really like this stuff. I think it's a good idea. I'm sure it can go wrong every now and then, especially with certain shotguns, but I've even considered this to be what would probably be, at the right distances, a good deer round. I mean, you got multiple wound cavities. It's just that much better for blood tracking, 
things like that. However, I know some states are restricted. My state in particular, you can't use any kind of duplex or multi-ball rounds. So let me know in the comments, do you hunt with this ammo? Would you? Would you use it for home defense or do you use it for home or self-defense? If you enjoyed this video and found this testing helpful, maybe give it a thumbs up and share it with someone else who might like it. If you're not already subscribed, I would check out our playlist. I'm sure you'll find a whole bunch of cool stuff that you'd be interested in. And if you think we're doing a really good job and you feel compelled to help support the channel, we are on Patreon and we have the YouTube join button turned on. Thank you to everybody who's at both of those places. Thank you all for watching this video and until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.